Good day everyone, welcome to Matt with Teacher Justin. On today's topic, we're going to talk about rhombus and its properties. Alright! A rhombus is a polygon with four equal sides. So this is an example of a rhombus. And let's identify the properties of a rhombus. Now we know that all sides of a rhombus are congruent. So next is the opposite sides are parallel. So we can say that side AD is parallel to side BC and side AB is parallel to side DC. So since our opposite sides are parallel, we can also say that a rhombus is a parallelogram. Let's talk about the angles of a rhombus. Now, according to its property, opposite angles are congruent. So, so we can say that angle A is congruent to angle C and angle B is congruent to angle D. Now, let's move on to another property about the angles of a rhombus. Okay, we can say that the consecutive angles are supplementary. So, if you add angle A and angle B, it is equal to 180 degrees. And angle B and angle C, the sum will be equal to 180 degrees. As long as they are consecutive angles, they will be equal to 180 degrees. Okay, now let's proceed to the diagonals of our rhombus. So the diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other. We can say that segment AE is congruent to segment CE. And segment DE is congruent to segment BE. The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So, we can say that it will form a 90 degree angle. The diagonals will form a 90 degree angle. So, for example, angle BEC will be equal to 90 degrees. Okay, next. Each diagonal of a rhombus bisect two angles of the rhombus. So we can say that the measurement of the angles of the rhombus will be divided into two congruent parts. Okay, let's proceed to solving parts of a rhombus. Now given a rhombus, we're going to solve for the value of x and y. So let's start first with this figure and let's solve for the value of x. Now to solve for the value of x, we will use the property that all sides are congruent. Okay, so we can say that segment MH is congruent to segment AT. So let's equate them, substitute the values of MH and AT. So we have 7x minus 11 is equal to 3x plus 17. Let's transfer all the variable term on the left side and all the constant term in the other using the addition and subtraction property of equality. So we will have 7x minus 3x is equal to 17 plus 11. Then let's combine like terms. We will have 4x is equal to 28. Then divide both sides by 4. x will be equal to 7. And that will be the value of our x. Now let's solve for the value of y. Now to solve for the value of y, we will also use the same property, all sides are congruent. So, we can say that side MA is congruent to side HT. Now, let's solve for the value of Y by substituting their corresponding value. So, we have 3Y plus 42 is equal to 4Y plus 25. Let's transfer all the variable term on the left side and all the constant term in the other using the addition and subtraction property of equality. So we will have 3y minus 4y is equal to 25 minus 42. Okay, let's combine like terms. We will have negative y is equal to negative 17. Let's divide both sides by negative 1. y will be equal to 17. And that will be our final answer. All right. Okay, let's have another example. So for example, we're given this rhombus and let's solve for the value of x and y. So first, so first, let's solve for the value of x. So let's use the property opposite angles are congruent. Now, since we're given the opposite angle of angle r, we can say that angle r is congruent to angle d. So 
we can say that x is equal to 143 degrees. Alright, now let's solve for the value of y. For solving for the value of y, we will use the property consecutive angles are supplementary. So, since angle D and angle S are consecutive angles, we can say that angle S plus angle D will be equal to 180 degrees. So, let's substitute the given values for angle S and angle D. So, we have Y plus 143 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. Let's transfer 143 to the other side of the equation, applying the subtraction property of equality. So, 180 degrees minus 143 degrees, that will be equal to Y is equal to 37 degrees. And that is our final answer. Alright. Okay, let's have our last example for today. So, for example, we're given this rhombus and we're going to solve for the value of X, Y, and Z. Now, let's start first with solving for the value of x. So, in solving for the value of x, okay, take note of our given. If the measurement of angle WOR is equal to 62 degrees, okay, what will be the value of our x? So, we know that this whole thing, WOR, is 62 degrees. So, we will use the property about the diagonals of a rhombus. So we know that each diagonal of a rhombus bisect two angles of the rhombus. We can say that angle DOW is congruent to angle DOR. And since the measurement of angle MOR is equal to twice the measurement of angle DOW, so let's substitute the value. So we have 62 degrees is equal to 2x. So, we divide both sides by 2 and x will be equal to 31 degrees. So, take note that since this is a rhombus, the diagonal will cut the big angle, the angles of the rhombus, into two congruent parts. So, the value of x will be half of the measurement of angle WOR. Alright, now let's proceed to our value of y. Let's solve for the value of y. By using the property about the diagonals of a rhombus is they are perpendicular. So we can say that the measurement of angle OSW will be equal to 90 degrees. So we can say that Y is equal to 90 degrees. Alright, now last, let's solve for the value of Z. So to get the value of Z, we will use the property of a triangle. Since we're given the measurement of x and y already, and if you're going to observe, we will have a small triangle here. And we know that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So we will use the angle addition postulate. So we can say that the measurement of angle WOS plus the measurement of angle OSW plus the measurement of angle SWO will be equal to 180 degrees. So let's substitute the values of each angle. So we will have X plus Y plus Z will be equal to 180 degrees. Now since we solve for the value of X and Y earlier, we can now substitute the values of X and Y. So we have 31 degrees plus 90 degrees plus Z is equal to 180 degrees. Let's combine like terms. 121 degrees plus Z is equal to 180 degrees. Let's transfer 121 degrees to the other side of the equation by using the subtraction property of equality. Let's combine like terms. 180 minus 121, that will be equal to 59 degrees. So we can say that Z is equal to 59 degrees. Alright, now that you already know about the properties of a rhombus and how to solve problems involving rhombus, it is your turn to try it. Please click the link in our description box below in order for you to test your skills. That's it for today. Again, I'm Teacher Justin. Goodbye, God bless, and stay safe. See you on my next video.